baby, where do you even begin? I got to get myself in the mode because it is time. You know you need it. You know you want it. You know deep, deep down in the cackles of your heart, soul, and essence that you got to have it. It's time, oh yes, to talk about Bears football. And at times like these, it's an important reminder that America really deserves this. Prime time, the NFL intentionally scheduled the Chicago Bears in this game. This was not a replacement for a canceled game. This was not an accident. This was intentional. Therefore, the NFL and NBC deserve everything that they get associated with that shit show we had to watch tonight. I mean, let the punishment fit. You persist on continuing to put the Bears in prime time, you're going to get Bears football and America suffers. And frankly, America deserves to suffer intensely. Yikes. The Bears were the get right opponent, that's for sure. Oh God. Like initially you thought, hey, maybe the Bears would at least be competitive here and have a chance, right? Series, very first play. It's Tyson Bajan. Deep down the field to Darnell Mooney. Complete. He can throw the ball downfield at least a little bit when he gets a tremendous amount of air underneath the by a ball. And then, of course, because of, we're talking again about the stupidity, the mediocrity of Bears football and getting his ass up fast and running full speed and selling the play like he wasn't touched because he fucking wasn't and it should have been a damn touchdown. He half-ass jogs, the refs blow the whistle and there's a touchdown wiped off the board. Duh. And then of course, after that bit of bad refereeing, after that rare great play call by Luke Getzey to start off the game, what does this dumb dick fucking do? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna mix it up. They're never gonna see it coming. We're coming out. It's a whole new Bears. The Bears. <sighs> Halfback dive. Halfback dive. And then fucking third down, Cody Whitehair gets blown up because Putts Poles thought that Cody Whitehair was still a starting level offensive lineman in the fucking National Football League. What in the fuck is that, you goddamn idiot? King Poles, my ass. Have you not been watching him? Did you not watch him last year? He was washed last year. There's no magical from Washedville. So that promising start, very first play, big play. You're like, wow, here we go. Secret Bajant, man. And then a couple of Getsies, a fucking Poles, and you're punting. Seven points resulted in none, and it was all from there. The Bears' defense didn't stop from scoring any points on offense until the fucking second half. You had people throughout the game on Twitter asking, like, what does Matt Eberflus do? Like, what is he good at? The approach or philosophy of the defensive side of the ball, which, by the way, he's not only the head coach, but he's also the defensive coordinator of. The hits philosophy, helped by totally suck. Financially. What's the defensive philosophy in 2023 for the Chicago Bears under this Matt Eber flush defense? I'll fucking tell you what it is. It's no pass rush combined with piss poor tackling layering in some not going to fucking cover anybody to some counting on turnovers that are going to be forced that won't be forced to, you guessed it, giving up a shit ton of points. And they certainly fucking delivered today. Now, was this a great performance by Tyson Bajan tonight? No, absolutely not. You're going to have Bears fans that are going to sit there and do backflips because they still believe for some dumb dick reason that Justin Fields is the fucking guy and that he's done anything to show that he's the fucking guy. No, Tyson Bajan had some good moments tonight. Like, look at it the first half. Valus Jones opening kickoff. 
cost the Bears a few yards in field position running it out of the end zone. Then as a punt team gunner, gets an interference penalty. And then Bajan hits him on another beautiful deep bomb that, of course, fucking Bayless Jones falls on his ass and then drops it Willie Galt style. I'm so glad Putz Poles spent a third round pick on that 25 year old fucking project wide receiver that took six years in college to finally have a competent performance. I'm just fucking dumb. Bajan hits a good play on in the passing game, and then they keep going back to the fucking run. Put him up. I got coverage. I know what I'm doing. I'm an NFL offensive coordinator. <laughs> and then you got Matt Eberflus in his fucking halftime interview blaming the fucking players. Well, we just don't tackle very well. Well, who doesn't coach very well, you fucking idiot? God, fuck. I saw plenty of people asking, like, what are these linebackers paid to do? I saw the graphic at the beginning of the game talking about TJ Edwards was like a top 20 outside linebacker this year in the NFL, and I fucking laughed. I said, that just speaks to how invalid Pro Football Focus's grading scale is. The fuck are you talking about? The Bears show tonight. Like, Edwards made some solid plays in run defense. He had a blitz or two that was effective. And he was total dog shit in coverage. <laughs> like Austin Eckler lit their asses up tonight underneath. For God's sakes, they let Quentin Johnston. This is a TJ Edwards fault. I'm just saying, like, they could fucking cover anybody, even if they wanted to. Bears football. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it's like all of this shit, you're wondering second half, hey, this is the Chargers. They can find a way to fuck it off. But again, we're talking about the Bears, so they're not going to be able to capitalize on it. But as shitty as this team is right now, and how bad this coaching staff is, the worst coaching staff in my lifetime as a Bears fan, and that's saying something, and that's not recency bias or hyperbole. That is fact. What astounds me is late in the game, it's 30-7. to seven. The Bears tried the tush-push. Of course, it doesn't fucking work. At least they learned from the, hey, earlier we went for it deep in our own territory because we didn't really have much of a choice. And on fourth down, Roshan sits there and dances in the backfield. Of course, that's because one of your interior linemen got fucking blown up. Lucas Patrick had a good one tonight. Oh, that was a good one, Ryan Pools. So at least it went for the tush push. Of course, it got fucking executed because Bears football. <laughs> so they run it again. <laughs> they actually scored the touchdown. <laughs> but Matt Eberflus tries to fucking challenge the previous play, but can't get the fucking challenge flag out in time. And then to make matters worse, the score is 30 to 13. I know the game is for all intents and purposes fucking over, but you're down 17. <laughs> Kick the extra point if successful. It's still technically a 2 TD. Two two-point conversion game. You would only need to score two touchdowns in theory to have a chance. Crazier shit has happened in NFL history. Instead, this dumb dick goes for fucking two. Of course, they don't get it. And it's fucking 17-point game and the shit's over. And then... And then... After the Bears have multiple chances to recover the onside kick and are unsuccessful because, of course, they fucking would be. They don't use their timeouts on defense. You, you, you don't get money back at the end of the game for fucking keeping the damn timeouts. Use them. Give your young quarterback more opportunities in this game. Then you finally get the ball back on offense because you allowed the fucking clock to run down for no fucking reason. And then you just take a knee to close it out. There are a lot of things I can't stand. Bears football being near the top of the goddamn list. But arguably the worst thing to me is a goddamn quitter. Nah, like rapist, racist, murderer, pedophile, like shit like that, obviously. Clear tier above, right? But in terms of other shit, like everyday shit, quitter's pretty fi high fucking up there. And if you're going to quit, then why the fuck should you continue to have a goddamn job? Kevin Warren was there in L.A. Take notes, motherfucker. That's what a real stadium looks like. Now you should see 
what a fucking real team looks like. Look at your team. See, that's not fucking it. And fire everybody's ass and start this shit over. Oh, Tyson Bates not too good. No shit. All the people, all the Bears fans, dorks that are going to be doing backflips because they still stubbornly cling on to this belief that has absolutely no validity about Justin Fields being the long-term franchise answer. Oh, they, they told you about Beijing. You didn't tell anybody shit. The reality is, is Tyson Beijing in his second career start, this 232 passing yards, that would be the sixth highest single game passing yards total of Justin Fields' career, who's had 31 career starts. That's not to tout Tyson Bajan as the guy, and that's never been my point here. That is to point out and illustrate just how much Justin Fields is not the guy. If you really truly think that this result tonight would have been any different with Justin Fields at behind center instead of Tyson Bajan, you are a fucking clown. Period. Period. Fields would have eaten a shit ton of sacks against Bosa and Mack. Are you fucking kidding me? I'll beige it like that first INT was bad. The second one late in the game, Darnell Moody hits him in the worst spot, right in the fucking hands. He drops it on fourth down interception. I shouldn't count on Bajan, but thumbs the breaks. It is an interception, right? Imagine that, Darnell Mooney. Like, his decline the past two years has been severe. He'll be gone next year, one would think, and nobody will fucking notice. That's how sad this shit is. But even late, you're talking about on fourth down. He's throwing like fucking outs or curls, whatever the hell you want to call it either way, to fucking a fifth string running back and Darrington Evans. What the fuck's going on here? Meanwhile, DJ Moore gets one target in the second half. It's this weird phenomenon. If you target DJ Moore, good things happen. And he managed to get, what, six targets tonight and one in the second half? Who the fuck thinks of this shit? Who sits down and spends an entire week coming up with a game plan and says, uh... I think it's a good idea if we only target DJ Moore once in the second half. They'll never see it coming. Put him up. I know what I'm doing. I'm an NFL offensive coordinator. Can you imagine? Like throwing it out wide with a quarterback that doesn't have a strong arm on fourth and short, knowing the corner's going to be looking for that shit to a fifth string running back instead of running some type of like slant or quick crosser to a darn... Or, Fucking DJ Moore, hell, even a Darnell Mooney or a Tyler Scott, I don't care what the fuck it is. Like, that's Bears football. All the way. It was a painful night. Sucks you had to wait all day for the inevitable that you knew was coming. But it is what it is. We soldier on. But at least the Bears protect the draft position. They're getting one step closer to that house cleaning that they so badly need. And most importantly of all, one step closer to getting that quarterback that can actually be the guy that they don't have on the roster right now.